Welcome back everyone! After once again dropping 4 games below 500, the Lakers were in desperate need of a win, and they were able to get one on Sunday. Even with the return of Steph Curry and Golden State riding a 5 game winning streak, they were able to pull out an 8 point victory, and largely due to Anthony Davis. Following him dropping 38 points in their Friday night defeat to Minnesota, he dropped 39 points in their win today, and pretty much every single one of them were needed. With Golden State practically begging anyone not named Malik Beasley to shoot, they absolutely needed a big game from Anthony Davis, though he was definitely not alone here. In addition to him, they got a big game from Austin Reeves, a hot shooting performance from Troy Brown Jr., and all around got great production from their role players. If we take a look at the box score, they had 6 different players in double figures, and then even more shocking, they only committed 7 total turnovers. All of that was a monumental difference compared to their last game, where they had only 3 players scoring double figures, and then committed 15 total turnovers, over double compared to what they had today. They might not have been able to crack the 35% mark from 3, but they were able to make up for it with their improved effort, which was something that Darvin Ham called them out for in their latest defeat. Our energy was off, our effort was off in certain plays, we didn't seem to have any urgency. It's like, like we were playing, they're playing, you know, they're fighting for their life as well, trying to get into the postseason. And they had that urgency, we didn't. And, um, you know, that's something we have to address. And um, we talked about it in, in, in post game, but tomorrow we look at it on film and then try to come out and have a better performance on Sunday. I think he was able to get through to them too. The Lakers came out hot in this one, putting up 30 points in only 8 minutes of playing time, and even putting together a 20 point first quarter lead. Now, they unfortunately were not able to hold on to that, but they never fell behind after taking that lead, and they really showed the fight that we were looking for from them. I mean, I really doubt that their pre-trade deadline team would have pulled this one out, and especially not while playing without LeBron. I know we tend to freak out every time they lose, but they are still very much in the playoff hunt, and in fact, they will become the 10th seed if the Utah Jazz are beat by the Thunder, and then if they are able to pull out another win on Tuesday, which will now be against a Memphis team playing without both John Morant and Dylan Brooks, they could even climb into the top 9. Again, definitely a lot of ifs here, but the Lakers are by no means out of it, and if they continue to play like they did today, then they should certainly be viewed as a threat. With all of that being said though, I will leave all of you with a few post game interviews from today's win, and after watching them, let me know your takeaways from the game in the comments down below. And then mentioned again pregame, how did you feel like you met the moment today, Steph coming back and kind of holding them uh, to, the, to the scoring point the total that you did? I, I thought it was great. Um, I thought it was great carryover. I told the guys just now after the game, um, just a great job just being on the same page, getting on the same page, having, you know, open dialogue during the film session yesterday. Uh, player to player, coach to player, player to coach, coach to coach. Everybody's just, you know, breaking down, dissecting what we were seeing, what we saw in that last game in particular, and how much we can improve um, in different areas of our game. And again, it was great, great carryover from our pace running habits, maintaining those throughout the course of the game, our attention to detail defensively, our rebounding, you know, it's another this team that can also beat you up on offensive glass, get those second and third opportunities and, you know, just to make those threes. But they came out with a barrage, man, 18 threes. It's, that's who they are, though. Um, they're the world champs for a reason. My hat's off to them. They have a hell of a, hell of a ball club over there. Uh, but I'm truly, truly proud of our guys just coming out and uh, staying locked in for the duration of the game and come away with a W, a much needed W. Darvin, 80 was so dominant early in the game, but I want to ask you about that play where he's on the block, Draymond shot clocks down, and, and he just attacks. Um, does that sort of embody kind of everything you're looking for in terms of playing downhill, playing with energy, um, and obviously tons of urgency and from your best player? Oh, absolutely. He, he did a great job setting the tone, um, blocking shots. You know, um, a, is, a has been the rock. Uh, you know, he and Brian both have, have been great. Uh, just being locked in mentally, 
even times when, you know, it's Brian right now, not physically able to help us, but still locked in mentally, spiritually, coaching up the guys on the bench, you know, sharing with the coaches as well what they're seeing. And just, you know, the thing we came into the season saying we wanted to play fast, physical, and free with force. And, um, you know, he exuded all of those words on the uh, offensive end tonight. And the thing I kept telling them is, you know, Golden State, they, they, they're they a very capable defensive squad, uh, always at the top year in and year out. They, they force you into different compromising situations with their lateral quickness and their the ability to help off and help one another switch off the ball, switch on the ball. But, you know, they're not so vertical. They're not a really vertical defensive team. By that, I mean shot blocking. And um, I just told them, don't settle. Don't settle. I'm selling our guards. Attack downhill. Attack the paint. You know, again, they're good at showing the crowd, putting the crowd around the ball. And I thought our ball was hopping tonight, 29 assists. So it was good. It, it, it was good. But, A, it, it was all led by A. Just his, his, willing, his unwillingness to settle. AD, what's the challenge been to, to, to try and lead the team on both ends of the court without LeBron, uh, D'Lo as well, and, and how, how were you able to kind of focus that energy uh, in a game like today against a tough team? Um, just know where we are. Uh, you know, we all felt like we let one go against Minnesota um, Friday. Uh, you know, we had some good film on ways we can be better. Um, you know, we know this is a elite third-quarter team. Um, you know, defending champions, they're going to make a run. They're going to make plays, make shots. Uh, you know, between Steph, Clay, and uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Poole, they elite shooters. Um, I think we locked in defensively. Um, they got away a couple times, uh, but we just continued to compete. Um, even when they made their runs, made their run of our own, and was able to close the game out. And how about just for you with the weight you always carry on defense, but then having to up the usage some uh, on offense? Like what? What is that uh, balance like for you? Uh, I mean, I've been doing it my whole career. I mean, even in New Orleans, you know, coming here, um, just doing whatever the team needs. Uh, obviously, with Brown out, um, you know, the team's going to rely on me more to, to make plays uh, for myself or others. And, uh, you know, other guys are stepping up, playing well, uh, making shots defended. Um, so it's a team effort. Uh, you know, I think we did a good job on both of the floor tonight. Um, like I said, that's a team who's um, seen every defensive coverage, um, seen you know a lot of shots go in over the years, um, been together for a while, um, you know championship experience. So uh, it was a big win for us. Eddie, kind of a two-part question. Um, one, what what does a, a twenty-point first quarter lead against the Warriors feel like in terms of comfort? And then secondly, I mean, you guys were able to, to hold them off, and it it felt like. You know, when, when you scored on Draymond on that baseline drive, that, that felt like maybe that was kind of you'd given yourself enough cushion. Um, what was the emotion like um, in the fourth quarter? For well, you? one, uh, no lead is safe. You know, with a team that shoots the ball as well as they do. Uh, you know, like I said, the three guys. Um, and even, you know, DiVincenzo shoot the ball. You know, Lamb hit a couple. So, um, you know, no lead is really safe. You know, we got to continue to put our um, foot on the gas. And, uh you know, we let it off a little bit. Um, like I said, guys got free and was able to make some shots. But, um, you know, the way they shoot the ball too well um, for it. And not just them, but, you know, a 20-point lead in this league is, you know, nothing anymore. It doesn't hold its value. Um, I mean, we seen it when we were down 27, you know, in Dallas. So, um, and then uh, even that move, you know, went in. You know, uh, I think they still had a – had some good looks, you know. They miss uh, stuff. Um, it's never over with them until it hit triple, Z, triple zeros, um, and that's the way we, we try to play the game tonight. Eating more usage, uh, right? Whether making plays or looking for your own shot, just given who's on the floor or not, um, does that impact at all the way that you see and think the game? Or are you still able to play naturally? Uh, play naturally. Uh, just try to make the right play, like I've said a billion times, um, and it worked today. So. It's a happy day. There, but there are contexts, though, within that where you do have to do a little more, though, right? Yeah, like, for yeah. sure. I mean, obviously, you got you got Bron and AD out where, um, or Bron and uh, D'Lo out. 
you know, they have the ball in their hands quite a bit. Um, so you kind of try to fill that void, not just with me, obviously, but, you know, other guys as well. Um, I thought, you know, Troy stepped up and played a really, really good game on both ends of the floor, uh, shot the ball well. Um, but like I said, it's not just me, you know, getting uh, or, try, or trying to do what those guys do. It's more so, you know, playing the way that I like to play, uh, the way that I feel. Uh, can help our team and then everybody else you know doing this a little bit of the same pitching in to try to fill that void without uh brown and d'lo austin uh 80 at 39 and uh hit, hit a couple of free throws late had that baseline drive against Draymond and hit that floater um what, what did you see from him tonight especially kind of down the stretch of the game just making winning plays yeah i mean uh 80s you know a uh, really good basketball player for obvious reasons. Uh, and then down the stretch, like you said, made a couple of free throws. And then to get that bucket on uh, Draymond uh, is big. Obviously, Draymond's a really good defender, um, you know. But uh, they say, you know, good offense beats good defense every day. And obviously, you know, AD's a uh, very talented offensive player. Big bucket. Um, and like you said, knocked down his free throws. We knocked down our free throws as a team late. Uh, so, you know. Uh, you kind of, I've grown to expect that from AD just because of, you know, his talent level. Um, you know, last night game, I think he had 39 as well. So, yeah, he's pretty good.